it's Lee from ColouringQueen.net and today I want to have another Floral Friday video. Um, as most of you know I love flowers and I'm trying to get better at colouring them and the only thing that makes you get better at colouring things I guess is to practice. So I've made it a challenge this year to colour in flowers and the way that I'm doing that and sort of keeping to it is having Floral Fridays where a couple of Fridays a month, maybe one, maybe two, depending on how my schedule is, I'm going to colour in pictures of flowers from some of my colouring books that feature flowers and that will help me uh, hopefully get better at colouring in flowers and also we can catch up as well and see what's happening in our worlds. So this week I'm continuing in the Flower Haiku colouring book. Now uh, I did review this colouring book and I'll pop a link to that below and I've already coloured in the sunflowers from this colouring book, just the haiku part. So the colouring book's by Ellie Marks and it's available in an artist edition and a PDF. I bought the PDF which is good because I can download it and print it out on different sorts of paper depending on what I feel like using. So I thought this week I would colour in the hibiscus in the colouring book. And I was tossing up whether I should colour the one with the haiku on it or whether I should colour in the, the full picture. So I've decided to go for the full picture and uh, I'm going to colour them in uh, pinks, I think. And yeah, I'm not too sure because I actually went out in the garden. I've got three hibiscus small plants. They haven't grown up big or anything yet. And uh, I went out and had a look at them. <laughs> <laughs> One had already flowered, so it was too late to to look at it, but it has some buds coming up, and it's an orange one. And I've got two that are basically white with a coloured centre, so I wasn't quite sure where I would go, and then I just thought, I think I'll go pink, because pink sort of reminds me of Hawaii with the frangipani, and I think it's a paddleboard on here. So I was thinking I'll do it in sort of pink and like yellow frangipanis and I think this paddle board or is it a surfboard with a oar, I'm not sure. I can't swim. These things are confusing for me. So I thought I'd do those in like a timber look because I've seen uh, surfboards that are timber style. So I'm not sure about that, but I thought it would make a nice contrast with the pinks. So, And I don't think we'll get it all done today, personally. So uh, we'll see how we go. Anyway, so what's everyone else doing today? I'm colouring in my flowers. And I've also been working in my Clara Makova Tenderful Enchantments colouring book. I just love that colouring book, so been having a few little projects on the go. I've got so many whips that I was thinking of doing a whip Wednesday because I've still got a picture of queens in Poland, uh, queens of Poland that I'm working on and I started working on that the other night and then I wasn't happy with it so I rubbed it out <laughs> which is what I do and um, I'm still working on Grazia Salvo's uh, Wild Soul I've also got uh, a picture that I'm doing for the beautiful Polish book, The News Carries Through the Forest, that I'm working on. And you'll see a video of that um, maybe this week or early next week. And uh, and then I decided that I would colour in Tenderful Enchantment. So I don't know. Is, is everyone like me and has like five whips going at once? Or do you just start a picture and actually finish it in one sitting? Yeah, I I can't help myself. I get uh, distracted really easily, and it's then I want to colour in the other picture, and uh, yeah. So I guess it's good in a way because I've got lots of things uh, that I can work on, like the Queens of Poland and the Grazia Salvo. Uh, it, it's a good opportunity to learn the hair and the clothing in that one, and with the 
it use carries through the forest it's a good opportunity to learn the the grass and the nature type coloring so I guess I'm uh, I'm getting getting a, a, a little bit of an education while I'm coloring them in which is good so I don't know how your week has been so far but here in Brisbane it has been so hot and humid it's just unbelievable and I know I shouldn't whine when half of Australia is on fire and I'm not whining it's just that at 6 30 in the morning I usually make a cup of coffee and I go out and I sit on we've got a, a balcony or a deck and I sit out there and I have my cup of coffee and that's when I read the news and I check Facebook and I check my messages and sometimes I even remember to reply to them and I've been sitting out there and no word of a lie at half past six in the morning even though it's all screened around and there's a large tree that overhangs it a little bit or shades it even at half past six in the morning I'm sweating and like really dripping sweat and I would actually colour for longer but because I've only got the fan on low so that the audio isn't interfered with I can only take so long of this heat without getting too hot without the fan so we've been having extremely muggy weather here and if it's not muggy it's pouring down rain which of course is fantastic and it's put out quite a lot of bushfires throughout Australia so no complaints again but the whole house here because we haven't put in our paths and our paving yet it has been kind of on the list for the last couple of weeks the whole place is just like a giant mud bath and everywhere you walk I just have to keep leaving all my shoes outside because they're just covered in like huge slabs of mud and we've got clay soil so it's it's like having a pottery pot stuck to the bottom of your shoe but the good news is that my garden is just loving it and I haven't had to water my plants and so that's great all the water on the plants and all my flowers are loving it although a few of my flowers got flooded with water and I think there must be something wrong with the, the drainage in the pots so I went out this morning and braved the heat and repotted them so that they don't continue to get flooded and I have lost a few herbs from my herb garden because the the planter box that I had my herb garden in kept filling up with water and just uh, I was scooping it out with a cup but it was raining more than uh, I could scoop and uh, uh, the big thing of course that I was worried about was that everything is so muddy and wet around here which is as I said it's it's great for the places where it's on fire in Australia that they're getting rain but um, here we haven't had uh, any extreme fires. The fires that we've had here have been put out really, really super quick and they haven't been extreme like they are in the rest of Australia at this time. We had fires uh, earlier last year. But um, I have been worried about the pool overflowing because it keeps filling up with water and it's like an inch from the top and... I'm sure at some stage it's going to overflow and yeah I'm not sure where all the water's going to go. <laughs> I guess we'll work that one out but uh, I guess you know at least with all this muggy weather it's really nice to have the pool so I'm glad we got that fixed and uh, have been able to use it because uh, it has been super good to have it. We went in the other night when it was uh, raining which I don't know if you guys like to swim in the rain but it was really really nice but when I was uh, cleaning the leaves out of it the other day before I was going to jump in I noticed a spider on inside the pool on one of the steps and then after I got David to remove that one 
I noticed another spider on the steps and so they can actually survive underwater on the steps so now I just have to be careful when I get in the pool that I check for the spiders first because I'm terrified of spiders really do not like them at all and here we've been really lucky like there hasn't been that many spiders and uh, usually David's the one that sees them and gets rid of them and even in my garden I've only had like one or two garden spiders there so but I don't like them I certainly don't like them in the pool where I might just put my foot and the other thing I always do when I go to the pool which might seem weird to some people is I always check the skimmer box for snakes because uh, we do have quite a lot of trees and we do have a, a, a we're trying to get a lush garden I don't think it is there yet we've still got more trees to get but I always worry about snakes because a friend of mine who lives in Queensland he posted a picture the other year or last year uh, of his pool skimmer box with the snake curled up inside it and yeah that freaked me out a bit so <laughs> I, I check in there first and I also check now for the spiders and I always check the toilet for snakes which I know might sound weird but there was a couple of articles here when we first moved here about people opened up the toilet lid in their houses within this state and there was a snake in the toilet bowl so I do not want to get bitten on the butt when I go to the toilet so I check for that as well so yeah talk about making someone paranoid all this nature but I grew up on a farm and we did have snakes and you kind of get used to walking around uh, sort of talking to yourself or singing because usually the snakes don't like the noise and when I was horse riding and things like that, I would always horse ride and sort of sing or whistle or whatnot so that they could hear you coming and uh, hopefully they would leave <laughs> and you wouldn't need to see them. But I do remember as a little girl a snake um, in the farmhouse that we lived in as a, as a small child. We lived with my grandfather for a while. And I remember this snake, just a black snake, red belly black snake, just, you know, waltzing into the kitchen and my mother hitting it with a broom to get rid of it. So I hope that we never see that here. In Sydney, it was not really a possibility in the area that we lived in, although when David worked on some job sites, uh, they had training to deal with snakes on the, the job sites. But not in the suburb where we lived and now I'm getting super paranoid and I'm just checking the the colouring cave here to make sure that, it, that there's no snakes or anything and no we don't live in the bush or anything I'm just super paranoid there is a bush a few blocks away and there's a park as well a couple of blocks away so I always figure that the snakes would go somewhere else before they come here that's my hope but uh, now that I've talked about snakes and probably terrified everyone that's uh, not keen on snakes, we <laughs> might just talk about this colouring picture for a while. So I've decided to use the pinks, uh, even though the, the specimen that I've got in the backyard is orange. I thought pink would be nice and I can sort of imagine pink uh, better with this picture. I don't know why. I think sometimes you you get a vision in your head of what it's going to look like and, and that's what it's going to be. So as well as uh, dealing with the terrible humidity and then the rain up here, it's really put us behind on what we were hoping to do. Uh, and uh, sorry, you might hear Millie's just jumped on the table. Come on Millie, Millie, off there. So we were hoping to paint like the outside of the house. We've only got one side wall done. But every time we go to do it, it starts to rain or there's thunderstorms. So Millie. So yeah, it's, it's, it's like we're not destined to have a completely painted house for some reason. It's such funny weather in Australia at the moment. It's either 
hot or it's bushfires, extreme heat or it's dust storms or there's rain uh, like what we've got which can cause flooding so it's just odd odd weather at the moment and unfortunately a lot of uh, houses have been damaged with hail storms and of course the bushfires that are still going on but more catastrophic is the amount of people uh, that have been really affected like unfortunately with the bushfires yesterday, uh, I think it was yesterday, three of the firemen uh, that were in the water tanker or using the water tanker to put out fires, unfortunately the water tanker crashed and uh, they weren't able to survive that, which is, I mean, it's awful on its own, but it's super awful in this case because those three firemen were very experienced and they came over from the US they're American citizens and they've been here since last November um, helping us to contain these awful bushfires with their experience and their knowledge and you know now their families at home you know won't see them which is just terrible so there's been a lot of uh, a lot of sad and depressing stories out of these bushfires, and a lot of animals affected and people, and the amount of acreage that's been burnt is just unbelievable. But hopefully they're going to get it contained soon, and at least some of this rain has been able to to put out some of the fires. So thank you to everybody who's been sending positive thoughts and prayers to Australia. I've received a few letters from people and messages asking if I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm just uh, still worried about friends of mine that are more in the, the danger zone. Um, but we're perfectly fine up here at this point in time and I think we will be fine because it's a lot more humid uh, up where we are at the moment so so I'm hoping that once uh, this rain clears up a bit I'll be able to get out in the garden a bit more because as soon as I go out there now it's just so muddy it's you can't get anything done so I'm hoping to plant some seeds I've got some zinnia seeds and I want to give them a go and I've got them in a few different colors so I want to see what they look like and I decided to expand my front garden bed and make it bigger so that we don't have to put grass in a little spot where I don't think it's going to grow because uh, we get a lot of shade from the tree and I'm hoping to put some more flowers in there so I've got them in pots at the moment just checking to see if they work in the heat or you know if they're going to get too hot and they seem to be going okay so I thought I might treat myself to some more flower seeds there's this place online in Australia called uh, The Seed Collection and you can buy uh, plant seeds for a dollar a packet which is super cheap. Yes, Millie, it's very cheap. And so I'm hoping to buy a few packets there of zinnias in uh, different flavoured colours. Different colours. Millie, you're putting me off. Um, you can't see Mill, she's sitting to the side of me, but I'm sure you can hear her. And I do apologise for my uh, stuffy nose. Got a, a bit of a cold, I think it's just like the change in weather. And hot and cold and hot and cold. So I'm hoping uh, it'll go away soon. It's not really bothering me, but it's just annoying having a cold. Or feeling stuffed up. 
And of course, I'm allergic to, to Millie's hair, so uh, that also makes me stuffed up. But it's it's worth it just to you know, pet her and whatnot. She's lying here on the side. She's so cute. I'm sure you can hear her coming through the microphone with her meow. We call her meow meow because she usually does two meows at once. She is loving the heat. I don't know if all long-haired cats are like her or not, but I used to have a Persian that was the same, and she likes to sit in front of the window where it's stinking hot and sunbaked during the day. And then poor Charlie, my little Maltese terrier, he likes to have the fan on him all day, so these two can't get comfortable. She likes to be stinking hot. He likes the fan and aircon on. And I like the fan and aircon on. I'm with Charlie. I don't know how she does it, just lying there, legs up in the air, getting a tummy burnt. But she adores it. And it's amazing because she's so fluffy. You'd think that she would overheat. But she says no. <laughs> so today when uh, David comes home from work, I'm going to go out. He's got to go to the doctor. He's got an eye infection and his eye is all red and it's completely swollen. and oh, It looks terrible, but the only appointment he could get was this afternoon. So hopefully they can give him something to... Uh, to help with it because it really is looking nasty and he says it's hurting as well and it's uncomfortable so we're going to go up there and then I think I might go to the shops and see if they've got anything new at like the discount shops looking for some storage for my Copic markers because I do have a little storage container that I use for my Spectrum Noir markers and they were the Spectrum Noir uh, brand ones but I've got all these Copic markers and I've got nowhere to put them so I've just got them in elastic bands at the moment so I'm hoping to find like a little tray or a little box type setup or a couple of little boxes where I can organise them and uh, have them more readily available and easier to see and sort them out into the different colours. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, hopefully I'll find something at one of those discount shops. So what's everyone else doing today? Is anyone colouring or gardening or diamond painting or... What else is everyone doing? Which reminds me, I've forgotten to order those seeds that I was telling you about. So I'm going to order some of the flower seeds. And I also might order some more vegetable seeds, even though I think I'm just feeding the possum with my vegetables and strawberries. Because every time I get ripe vegetables or ripe strawberries, when I come down the next day, it's all gone and just the stems there. Or it's got little bite marks in it from where Mr. Rat or Mr. Possum or I don't know who's eating it has left it out for me. But I'm going to try and find a, a net or a cloth or something that I can lock up my vegetable patch in overnight and put a padlock on it and keep out the possums uh, from eating it. We did see him the other night in the backyard, but I haven't seen him since. It's probably too full from all the strawberries that he keeps stealing from me. And the thing with those homegrown strawberries is you can really tell the difference in taste they have so much more flavour than the ones that we get from the supermarket. And after we get back from the shops, I'm probably just going to continue working on one of my whips, whether it's the one from Clara 
the one from the Polish book or the Grazia one or the Queens of Poland one. I'm not sure. Definitely going to work on one of them. I have been also trying to work out a menu. So we're going to have uh, all the neighbours over, not this weekend, maybe next weekend if we can get the house outside painted in time and get the paving done. So we're going to invite just all the people that, that live around here. So maybe a block or half a block radius type thing. And just so we can get to know them, because we've lived here a year now and we don't really know that many people. And the worst of it is that I usually only know people by the type of dog that they've got. So I found out a guy's name the other day that I've been calling him Black Dog for a year um, because he's got a black dog. <laughs> and when I look out on the balcony, I see everyone walking their dogs and whatnot of the morning. And so he's always just been black dog to me. And then there's another guy that I just call Corgi um, because he's got a, a Corgi type dog. Or it might be a Beagle, um, but he's got one of those. And then there's a couple that have got four dogs that have all got little lights on their collars so that you can see them twinkle along the road. So we just call them lights up. And uh, then there's some people without dogs, so we call them by their car, so there's Black Ute or Mrs. Black Ute. So it would actually be good to, to put some names to these people rather than, you know, saying, oh, I spoke to Black Ute today or, or you know, the lady that walks around collecting seeds to plant, you know. It would be good to actually meet people and find out their names and whatnot and what they do. Everyone's really nice but no one seems to tell you what their name is and you might be waving to them for a year and you have chats and whatnot but you still don't know what their name is. So I only know the names of like four of the neighbours here so we're hoping that uh, and plus also we've made a lot of noise and stuff with the renovations and probably been a bit disruptive uh, we've tried not to, of course, but, you know, sometimes that's the only way. And kind of think that it would be a nice thing to do, a nice gesture, uh, to have people over and uh, they can see what the renovations are like because everyone always stops and, you know, says, oh, it's looking great and all the rest of it. And compared to what it was like, it certainly is. If you're new here, we bought the worst house in the suburb and <laughs> we've been uh, doing it up for sort of on and off for a year and very slowly. I don't like the heat. So everyone's always really complimentary on the renovation, so I think it would be nice for them to see. And I know a couple of our tradies wanted to come over and see what it looked like when they were finished or when we'd finished doing other things. So we'll invite them and... Uh, everyone else and also we I think we're the only house for like a block that's got a pool so I think it'd be nice for the kids and adults to be able to have a dip in the pool and we'll have a barbie I'm just not sure what to cook because when you don't know people you don't know their meal choices like are they vegetarian or vegan or they're on a keto diet have they got allergies or you know so I'm not really sure what to make uh, for this barbecue so I was thinking of just you know keeping it simple and having a barbecue and then having like a ice cream sundae station where people could make their own sundaes and you know I'd have things that they could put in for ice creams and I thought that might make it simple and you could have like an adults, you know, version of a Sunday and like a, one that kids would like. But I don't know, it's so long since we've had people over, I, I can't think. So, yeah, hopefully I'll think of something uh, by the time we, we get them over. And hopefully it will stop raining so that we can actually do the paving and and not have this as a mud pit for when people come over because that would be pretty embarrassing. I'm also wanting 
you know, to get people over because I feel like once people come over and see it that we're kind of finished and I can put down my paintbrush and not have to do anything anymore because every day if I'm not painting something I'm usually thinking about something that I could paint. And we've been put off the last couple of weeks because of the rain in between all day you know sometimes it's raining really hard and you can't really paint outside because the paint's going to run or it's not going to dry and then when it does get uh, ready to paint and the weather's cooled down a bit then it's, it's so mud affected that you can't really paint either you have to clean up all the mud <laughs> so I'm hoping though like when we have the people over that it, it actually is like the finish of the renovation. It's like we've done everything and then it's just normal house maintenance because I really am over it. Um, I never thought that we would be doing this for this long and it was never the plan, but we never planned on moving back to Sydney and then coming back here and not being able to get work and therefore not being able to finish the renovation. So those things sort of got in the way of uh, finishing it a lot earlier and I'm just so sick of it. I just want like a normal life where I know where things are and I've still got colouring books downstairs in our sort of bit that we've made into a granny flat type thing. I've still got colouring books in boxes and that downstairs that need to be let out of their box and come up here and I never thought that they would be in storage for this period of time. I thought I would have everything here in my office and whatnot so I can't wait for it just to be all finished and everything unpacked and the only thing that we have to do is just normal housework and you know fix things when they break every now and again. That's my dream and then I have all this extra spare time that I can do things rather than paint. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind painting, but not houses. I'm sick of painting houses. It's too hot. So I'm hoping that that's what's going to happen soon. But with David's eye at the moment, that's, that's caused a little bit of delays because he's got really blurry vision, so... I don't want him up on a scaffold or a roof or anything like that, not while his, his eye is infected. So hopefully that can clear up soon and, and hopefully we can make this one last push effort and get all these little bits and pieces done. Oh, they've been hanging over our heads and get it all finished because definitely sick of it. <laughs> Have you guys ever done a renovation? If you have, you know, let me know in the comments below if it took you a year to get it finished. Because this is, this is a year too long. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think it would be good for Charlie uh, when we finish as well because he likes exploring and there's lots of places around that we don't let him go because he might hurt himself with tools or, or, you know, bits of construction equipment lying around. So... It'll be good once he can run around and do whatever it is that he wants to do, as little dogs do. And Millie has been wanting to escape and see downstairs for months now. She keeps sneaking out and running down the stairs and I have to keep grabbing her back. So it'll be good for her because we'll take her down there and she can have another place to, to play which I'm sure she'll like exploring and seeing what she can get into. What mischief and of course there'll be umpteen boxes for her to jump in and play with because I was thinking you know if I got a job that I might just you know leave Charlie and Millie downstairs in the granny flat while I went to work and uh, during the day so I want to see if they like it down there but we'll see at the moment she's pouring my computer you can't see because she's out of video shot. But she's got a big paws all over my apple. She's eating it. Just, I'm sorry about my um, stuffy nose. I'm very blocked up. 
with this weather. So I think this picture is coming along nicely now and I don't really have that much more to do like flower wise I've done most of the flowers I think and then there's the leaves to do so I don't know whether to do those off camera or to do them on another Floral Friday I don't know if I could call it Floral Friday if I've just got leaves to do that might be false advertising <laughs> but it could just be finishing up the florals but I'm happy enough with the way the hibiscus and frangipanis have turned out might make the frangipanis a little bit yellower I'm not sure let's we'll see see what happens but yeah I'm happy enough with those I think I'll finish up here so that's it from me for the Floral Friday this week. The book that I was colouring from is Ellie Marks's uh, Flower Haiku and I've reviewed it before. I'll pop a link down below. And I apologise for my stuffy nose. I'm so sorry. And also for my um, filming. I broke my tripod uh, this morning. I was trying to move it and I broke it so... Uh, the camera might not be as good in the next few videos because I've got it held together with bits of sticky tape at the moment <laughs> until I can get a, a replacement or until David can fix this one where I broke it. So we'll see how we go with that. So that's it from me. Uh, I will see you soon in another video. If you like this video, please click the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, please click the subscribe button and hit that little bell to be notified when I upload a new video. Until next time, happy colouring.